The financial sector consists of companies which provide financial services to both commercial and retail consumers. Included in the financial sector are the banking, mortgage, consumer finance, capital markets, and insurance industries, as well as mortgage real estate investment trusts, or MREITs. For an economy to remain stable, it needs a healthy financial sector, and the economy certainly is not stable right now, so stick around for an overview of the financial sector as a whole and see how it reacts to different macroeconomic drivers. Stick around to the end of the video to see which of the financial industries is currently the strongest. Many companies within the financial sector generate revenue from issuing loans and longer term mortgages. As interest rates increase rapidly, the cost of borrowing is driven upward and the demand between banks and other financial institutions to borrow money decreases, reducing opportunities to generate revenue. High interest rates present a large threat to the financial sector as a whole because the economy is more stimulated and active in a climate with low interest rates. Financial companies benefit from low interest rates as the opportunity for capital projects and investments increase and more residential consumers are willing to take on mortgages. It's important to differentiate between an economy with moderately rising interest rates and one with rapid rate hikes. Increasing interest rates aren't necessarily bad for the financial sector as it presents banks and other lenders the ability to raise rates and earn more money from their consumers. Unfortunately, this just won't be the case for the next few years, and demand for credit and loans will be reduced. The reason the Fed expects to continue increasing interest rates over an extended period of time is to curb the drastically increasing rate of inflation, which has an overreaching effect on much of the economy. High inflation environments also present a high threat to the financial sector as the value of consumers' money decreases, tightening their spending and making them less likely to borrow money. Credit rationing becomes more severe, resource allocation is less efficient, and capital investments are hurt as the value of the dollar decreases. As reported by Hartford Funds, link in the description, mortgage REITs, which invest in mortgages, are among the worst performing sectors. Just like bonds, their coupon payments generally become less valuable as inflation increases, sending their yields higher and prices lower to compensate. Furthermore, high inflation can still be especially harmful for banks because it erodes the present value of existing loans that will be paid back in the future. The treasury spread, which has continued to decrease since our last video on the utilities sector offers a medium threat to the financial sector as it generally signifies a struggling economy because investors are moving their money from short-term bonds to long-term bonds, causing the yield on 10-year treasuries to decrease as the short-term options now appear riskier. The final macroeconomic driver we look at, real gross domestic product, is still decreasing. In Q1 of 2022, the real GDP decreased by 1.6% with finance and insurance contributing minus 0.61% to the overall loss, beating out most all other industry groups and earning a high threat level. Real GDP losses begin to slow down in Q2 of 2022, decreasing by just 0.6% and the financing and insurance industries actually benefit the GDP, adding a positive 0.17% to the overall loss, lowering their threat level somewhere between medium and low. Before we look at how each industry within the financial sector is currently performing, I need your guys' help. I want to start doing stock analysis videos again between uploads of these sector deep dive. If there's a particular company within the financial sector that you want analyzed, please make sure you put it in the comments below. Like the video while you're down there and hopefully we'll be reviewing that next week. The industries within the financial sector have performed terribly year to date as reported by FinViz, with shell companies performing the best, losing just 2.64%, followed by many of the insurance companies with losses ranging from 2.86 to 16.94%. Banks, capital markets, financial conglomerates, and credit services are in the middle there, and companies in the asset management and mortgage finance industries round out the loss at rates of minus 35 to 45%. Mortgage finance companies specialize in originating or funding mortgages for both residential and commercial properties. Sometimes called direct lenders, mortgage companies typically only specialize in mortgage products and do not offer any other banking services. Additionally, the focus of mortgage finance companies mainly remains on originating loans, then attempting to sell them to different client servicers, securing funding, and removing the debt from the mortgage company's balance sheet. Here are some mortgage finance companies graph by their year-to-date returns and return on equity or ROE. Let's take a look at Rocket Companies Inc. Stock ticker RKT, better known as Rocket Mortgage. RKT is currently trading around $6.40, down from $14.16 at the beginning of this year, a 55% decrease. Also note, this drop in share price has resulted in the PE ratio decreasing to 3.51 and the stock is currently rated to be undervalued by analysts. In regards to their business operations, Rocket Mortgage originated one $145 billion in mortgages in 2019. As previously discussed, it does not 
benefit mortgage companies to keep this bet on their balance sheets and Rocket Mortgage turns right around and they sell more than 90% of all loans to government sponsored entities such as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac for securitization. With that being said, these companies do have their sensitivities. And between June 10th and 17th, 11 mortgage companies lost a collective $6.14 billion in value, declining 17.4% according to a housing wire analysis of data, link in description. Mortgage companies receive a medium on the strength meter because the uncertain economic climate and quickly changing interest rates make it more difficult for these companies to capitalize by originating loans. For example, if a company issues a mortgage loan at a 5% rate and interest rates increase before they have the chance to remove it from their balance sheet, their margins will be diminished when they sell it. The medium strength upside comes from the recent refinancing boom of 2020 and 2021, allowing many mortgage companies to stack up significant levels of cash which were not even affected in Q1 of 2022. Of the 11 previously discussed, HomePoint, Mr. Cooper, and Flagstar were the only three with a reduced cash position. Taking a look at Rocket Mortgage's balance sheet, for example, shows $32.7 billion in total assets with $2.1 billion in cash. This is weighted against RKT's total liabilities of $23 billion and $9.8 billion in debt. They also host a current ratio of 5.03, so add them to your watch list when interest rates level and inflation settles. The banking industry can be broken down into three sub-industries, retail, commercial, and investment banking. Retail banks service consumers, such as you and me, rather than corporations. They offer checking and savings accounts, mortgages, and other loans, credit cards, and even certain investment services. Corporate or commercial banks deal with businesses and corporations and provide both account services and credit products tailored to business needs. Lastly, investment banks underwrite deals, secure access to capital markets, offer wealth management and tax advice, advise companies on mergers and acquisitions, or M&A, and facilitate the buying and selling of stocks and bonds. Financial advisors and discount brokerages also occupy this niche. Diversified banking companies offer a multitude of services to both consumers and companies, such as Wells Fargo, ticker WFC, who have lost minus 16.17% year-to-date with a return on assets of 0.9 and a dividend yield of 2.98%. Additionally, WFC has beat out the financial select sector spider fund, ticker XLF, relative to the S&P 500 year-to-date, despite being more volatile. The banking industry receives a low on the strength meter currently as rapid rising interest rates have led to a steep drop in the net interest margins, or NIM, for U.S. banks, to rates we have not seen since 2008. Net interest margins simply represent the amount of money a bank is earning on their loans compared to the interest they are paying on deposits to consumers, as there is likely a larger demand for savings accounts. Mortgage Real Estate Investment Trusts, or MREITs, provide financing for income-producing real estate by purchasing or originating mortgages and mortgage-backed securities, MBS, earning income from the interest on these investments. Mortgage REIT companies also receive a low on the strength scale because the momentum of increasing interest rates reduces the book value of these companies as the price of mortgage-backed securities moves inversely to interest rates, exemplified by the value of the 30-year uniform mortgage-backed securities reducing dramatically since August 2022. We have previously discussed Orchid Island Capital, stock ticker ORC, ORC, you can check out that video if you haven't seen it yet, who was trading around $23.15 at the beginning of the year and is currently priced around $8.20, roughly a 65% decrease year to date. Additionally, as a result of the price plummeting, the dividend yield has increased dramatically, now sitting at 23.36%. Let me know in the comments if this is the stock you want us to look at next week. Also included in the financial sector are different types of insurance companies providing consumers protection against death or injury and property loss or damage damage, as well as liability issues. There are a few different types of companies belonging to this financial sub-industry, which include insurance agents who represent insurance carriers and can get you enrolled in a plan. This is different from insurance brokers who represent the consumer and shop between insurance companies for the best policy fit for their client. Also included in the insurance industry are companies who underwrite insurance policies assessing the risk of insuring clients. Reinsurers are also included in this industry and they provide financial protection to insurance companies themselves. It's important to keep in mind that each different insurance sub-industry reacts slightly different to the macroeconomic drivers. For example, life insurance companies benefit from rising interest rates because they generate revenue by reinvesting premium payments they receive from their consumers into interest-generating products. As these rates increase, so does the spread. Property and casualty or PNC insurance companies should not have as optimistic an outlook as they are severely affected by rising rates of inflation. This is the result of the insurance companies having a higher 
cost of burden on filed claims because the cost of repairs are higher than they were in the past. You may have noticed that the returns for the life and PNC insurance companies did not react as how we discussed, and I had to think about why this was for a bit, but I believe the past three years have been significantly harder on life insurance companies than their PNC counterparts. This is largely due to the pandemic and colossal numbers of nationwide hospitalizations, which inevitably resulted in a 15.4% increase in life insurance payouts from 2019 to 2022, reaffirmed by the year-to-date returns of XLF, the Spider S&P 500 Insurance ETF, ticker KIE, and the Invesco KBW Property and Casualty Insurance ETF, KBWP, relative to the S&P 500, the PNC Insurance ETF beat out all others, returning roughly 19%, just slightly higher than the broader Spider Insurance ETF, with the finance sector as a whole lagging by almost 15%. For this reason, we are giving insurance companies a medium on the strength meter. Despite receiving some adverse effects from the multiple economic drivers we've discussed, the wide range of business models within the insurance industry grant us the ability to find some less than pessimistic opportunities compared to other industries whose balance sheets are hurting much more. We've looked at a whole lot of different industries and companies, so let's try to wrap this up all nice real quick. From Jane January 13th to May 23rd, a 90-day period, the energy sector, represented by the Energy Select Sector Spider Fund, XLE, had greater returns than all other sectors relative to SPOT, clocking in at 48.72%. These returns are consistent with the sector rotation theory as staples, healthcare, and utilities are beginning to pick up alongside energy. The following 90-day period, from May 25th to October 3rd, things begin to get a little crazy. While financials are only losing out by minus 0.88%, real estate has dropped tremendously tremendously at minus 7.54%, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks. Subscribe to get notified of that. Also, the consumer discretionary sector saw returns of 8.03%, which means we are straying away from the theory. With that being said, I believe there are some great future opportunities in the financial sector when the economy begins to settle down a little bit, such as Rocket Mortgage, Stock Ticker RKT. Don't forget to let me know which financial company you want analyzed next week. The comment with the most likes will get chosen. Please don't make me pick one myself. Like this video to get a some exposure and subscribe if you haven't already. Last thing to remember here, nobody can time the market. It may benefit you to continue making small purchases of shares on the way down, reducing your average cost basis over time. This is done so you can efficiently capture the entirety of profits on the way up. Obviously, you would want your largest purchase of shares to be as close to the bottom of the market as possible, but, but I don't know any better than you when that may be. As always, I'm Patrick Zimmerman. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.